Uh, Jin Double. Uh, okay. So I know it's uh, always, almost noon and everybody feels hungry. Okay. All right. So uh, my topic is. Uh, a little bit different now, a globalizing culture turn, and who is afraid of new media, new media movements, and new media arts practice in post martial law Taiwan. How many of you know about Taiwan? Raise your hands. Wow, very good. In fact, I knew two professors from here just uh, visit my campus in Taiwan. All right, so what and how does new media signify to the postmodern society today? Evil, necessary evil? In the long democratization process in Taiwan, it's sustainable efforts to uh, stabilize the new media discourse as SDGs promoted by the United Nations. Looking at these issues in critical perspective from Taiwan, uh, looking at these uh, critical perspectives from Taiwan, this paper, while investigating the trajectory of conceptualizing new media discourse in Taiwan, that uh, penetrating through new media movements and new media arts in the post martial law Taiwan era, and also explores the redefinition of media literacy. That term I seldom heard this morning, but it was very popular and important in the part of the world, Taiwan, as media literacy as public civil educational action. The paper argues new media just posed with the open sky policy of global localist mentalities, both from the government, Taiwan, the industries, pretty much around the world, and market audience, both from the competition and collaboration with international media enterprises. Taiwan has been seen as a big pie uh, in the development of, um, you know, satellite and cable televisions uh, 20 something years ago. And so this, and it has undergone fundamental transformation of Taiwanese media, sabbatical into a monster savvy new world and celebrate Taiwan's mediation into reflection of new media mythology from its social and media movements and also from practices with uh, uh, new media arts both at home and abroad. Okay, so a little bit backgrounds about pre martial law Taiwan. The nationalists came to rule bureaucracy. Failure in the battlefield was Communist Party, now PRC, and also media control. They lost pretty much the war in the real war and also media control, moved to Taiwan since 1949. The kind of a traumatic mentality propels the ruling dominant system to launch extremely totalitarian media control under white terror in Taiwan uh, with street censorship and active political propaganda in the realm of the media message, be it newspaper, television, film, you no know, examples here could be Taiwanese language film, uh, newsreel before screening film at cinemas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. After the takeoff, industry uh, initiated by TMT Rule General uh, Central Motion Picture Company to revive Mandarin Chinese film production with the idea of the house realism cinema movements in the 1960s. Very few new media production under Cold War atmosphere and white terror mechanism until late 1970s. In the pre martial law period, small theater movements erupted vibrantly in universities and colleges, and also in 1970s. Campus folklore movements resisting the totalizing soundscape for American pop rock music in Taiwan has been local young singers striving for pro-local melody and lyrics depicting a Taiwan attitude. And meanwhile, the nebulous modern literary mood, uh, debates on newspaper supplement pages between China Times and United Dailies. These are two major newspapers at the time. Once again, touch upon the literary apparatus and identity politics, namely the modern versus the nativist, or culture China versus cultural Taiwan. All these debates and media movements result in the birth of international well-known cultural phenomenon, that is, New Taiwanese Cinema. The year 1982 marked the beginning of New Taiwanese Cinema with Ho Xiaoxian, Edward Yang, and many other um, directors and filmmakers involved. Ho's film aesthetics criticized from his commercial film production experience with Li Xing, director of House Realism Movement, included deep focus, fixed camera positions, and long shots. New Taiwanese cinema, the most stimulating movements of all times in Taiwan's film history, and probably also from the entire Chinese cinemas, 
shows these motionless movements on the screen. A new Taiwan cinema following the spirit of the beautiful Holman and in depth reflection to the social philosophy, many perspectives ended with the new Taiwan cinema manifesto in 1987. The same year, martial law was lifted up in Taiwan, and new Taiwan cinema has been um, opening uh, Taiwan to the whole world with the name Taiwan. Before new Taiwan cinema is always ROC cinema, or in short, China cinema. Same as uh, from the other side of Taiwan, uh, Taiwan Straits. In advertising industries, ideological adver advertisement agency, manufacture aids for Stimerol, a, a brain for chewing gum products from Denmark, and Sunrise department store in major cities in Taiwan. These TV commercials occupy the privileged discursive, uh, discursive position among everyday lives. Though often inserted as capitalist commerciality, leads to showcases subversive poten uh, potentiality. Critical thinking and its pedagogical applications were in place with a spectrum of all competing images and discourses with the arrival of postmodern law era. Okay, so prevalent piracy and infringed property rights from Hollywood commodities were the main cause for the Taiwan's new media landscape on international arena. All right, so the, food, the fourth channel next to the three state-run television was the crucial concern for local level pol uh, political resources and alternative markets. Active satellite and cable televisions were legalized in Taiwan on August 13, 1993, uh, basically from the tremendous pressure from US government. But before that, direct broadcasting satellites from Nippon uh, Broadcasting Company, Japan, with its spillover of a signal uh, footprint over Taiwan, which no denying has caused the anxiety of the invasion of new media imperialism and neo colonialism in the electronic media scenario. Taiwan has been colonized um, for 50 years under Japan. So here comes again the signal from Japan, right? Um, but it provided alternative option for a quality television program too. Olympic Games uh, in Seoul in 1992, South Korea, uh, further accelerate the popularity of DBS in Taiwan. So we are watching games uh, in Seoul through Japanese DBS signals. Local communities near Taipei and Eastern Taiwan unlawfully initiated force channel to provide access to window for alternative political perspectives for constituencies, pornographic materials, and or betterments of TV signal transmission quality. Prior to that, new and alternative media environment uh, movements, video shops were taken as essential audiovisual markets as the risk of violating the film copyright from Hong Kong and also USA, Hollywood. USA threatened Taiwan to raise its tariff against imported goods into American market based upon domestic, uh, domestic uh, Act 301. Um, that has been just mentioned. Uh, so the act was to punish or to revenge those infringements of the so-called new media goods. In terms of radio television broadcasting, radio and television broadcasting called in formats reveals the contour of public sphere echo with Jürgen Habermas, the from school uh, scholar, to imagine a better democratic community among differences, uh, different groups in Taiwan, be it ethnic groups, interest group, etc., etc., and the idea of heteroglossia um, uh, from uh, Mikhail Bakhtin, as it was, best demonstrated a new term for media expression that satellite and cable television industries, after a long period of the idolization, shoots a globalized, localized switch. Taiwan also takes efforts to be the hub of a, ge a geographic Asian regionalization. In 1995, the Asian Pacific uh, centers proposed by the governments, including six centers. Among these six centers, Asian Pacific Media Center and Asian Pacific Telecommunication Centers seemingly projects a new, a brand new geopolitical imaginary map. Um, it doesn't work that way. I mean, it was supposed to be very successful uh, government projects. Um, well, basically because the Hong Kong turnover to um, 
China in 1996. So this project was promoted both by the executive yuan governments, government information office, economics, construction councils, so the media and econo uh, economies, and also Taiwan, jumping from Taiwan to other parts of Asia. Um, so in terms of content providing and talent cultivation, this project aims to erect Taiwan as the center of the Mandarin Chinese media and soft power. Uh, one of the ideas is uh, the Golden Horse Film Festival was in 1996, which I service for two years. With such ambition in mind, Taiwan was competing against Shanghai, Beijing, Hong Kong, Singapore, with Chinese language programming, production, distribution, and exhibition. And meanwhile, public television system, we do have uh, public TV, PDS now, was finally established after the Public Television Act passed the parliamentary procedures in 1995. Compared with Hong Kong, I mean, no, not Hong Kong, NHK, Japan, BBC, uh, uh, UK, and other public broadcast systems, PDS Taiwan, from the very beginning was rooted from the global, local discovery environment and grassroots negotiation among political forces. Thanks to the digitalization, PDS was successfully tiered into five, now five, different channels in which a Taiwanese language channel was in shape in 2019 four years ago. Um, it's, a, it's a special channel only for dialects. All right, um, me, I can speak the dialects, but it may not be that well to understand everything with the subtitle in the dialects. So it's a new invention of written form of the language in dialects. Okay, uh, this TV signal spectrum also served to, uh, for FTV, for most of television, a terrestrial television later in 1997. After the PES started its construction and operation, generally seen as pro-independence advocacy for most of television, unlike other three major television, indulged with government interference, uh, capital investments, financial uh, investments, and ideological propaganda. And so FTV was shareholdered by general public and stresses the importance of people-oriented broadcasting service. The campaign for grassroots television came as a surprise when FTV launched the first English uh, news service. So it's um, very local, I mean pro-local television, but it has still until the day uh, the best uh, English news service. Um, so, and so it also followed TTV to create a new Taiwanese language news program too. FTV also attracts international investment interest. That's important because it's probably the last terrestrial television in the 1990s. Most of the terrestrial uh, television was licensed already as late as the 1970s. So Eastlander, yes, the cosmetic group has indicated their interest. They want to invest the, uh, the television station in Taiwan. That's a miracle, okay. And, um, Okay, but subject to the Broadcasting Television Act, no foreign direct uh, investment is possible in such area in Taiwan. Compared with Australian media guru Ruben Murdoch's Star TV purchased by Hong Kong entrepreneur Li Gahin, and also the formation of Phoenix Channel by Ruben Murdoch and its Chinese military counterpart, this was another good example. All three social movements, such as parading, petition, and quote unquote, hunger demonstrations on media ownership, media governance, and media policies were not unseen and very, un very usual, often seen in Taiwan's media screen. For example, media withdrawal of political parties, governments, administration, and media forces from three major television stations, uh, or Taiwan's business on many China markets, but on through uh, acquisition and merger, bought off three government media to propaganda this pro-Chinese tendency. Okay. National Communication Committee, NCC, occupying federal, sorry, copying Federal Communication Committee under White House USA, was formed under the executive yuan in Taiwan to serve as the supreme body for media regulation, censorship, management, and technological developments. Extended from government information office as government speaker and regulatory agency, NCC now became a target for civil movements. I mean, a lot of people weren't happy about NCC uh, with its dirty hands involved in a lot of media operation. And uh, so they, they urged the uh, 
and since it dismantled the over uh, political size, ideological size, and often obviously unfair administration, its many decisions to overthrow the TV channel license were already revoked by the High Court. New media refers to radio, television, and newspaper after USA's Telecommunication Act 1986 further suggests the possibility of a convergent media scenario. So in Taiwan, we had a first online newspaper, uh, very like 30 years ago already. Uh, it's called Tomorrow Online News, the first ever online news service initiated in 1983. And it was started to upgrade the combination of journalistic power and information um, communication technology. It also constantly worsened the tabloid style of gossip news at the same time set a landmark for personal anchor platform and started a new initiative that is netizen movements in which the minority social groups and activists echo with starting networking with their possibility partners both domestic, domestic at home. All right, so new media arts, artists practice energized from concept arts, behavioral arts, happening arts, was cross-showing in a gallery and also on the streets during the, these parades. Yes, I'm talking about real social street movements and also movements in ideas. And finally, in art festivals, both in Taiwan and other international venues, be it in Europe or some other parts of Asia, collaborated with departments of mass communication, FJCU, that's my departments, Visual Communication Art Association, established in 1990, advocates the importance of exploring the new and complex cultural phenomenon integrated with multimedia outlets and various media arts. It has held many international symposiums inviting well-known uh, cultural studies pr uh, practitioners, mostly from USA, uh, cross-strait film scholars on men in China cinema, and also uphold Golden Deer uh, Video Awards to encourage, that was the first kind in Taiwan to encourage video production, uh, mostly documentary in Taiwan. And documentary filmmakers have been involved with these uh, movements for you know many, many years, uh, four decades at least, to encourage more direct and overall engagement into public visual activism and new media literacy. It was then the, the waves of Nanjing Pak, Cindy Sherman, Bambar Kruger, and animation films from Shanghai in the 30s were first introduced to Taiwan. Right, it was a little bit weird, because uh, we are cutting off any connection with Shanghai. I mean. Uh, after 1949, Taiwan. All right, along the past three decades, inheriting artists' aesthetic spirit and vivid visual styles from previous generations in diverse realms, from cinema, radio, music, theater, advertisement, television, internet, and digital arts. So Taiwan's new media artists, a bunch of them, you know, maybe, maybe you know, more than 30 well known around the world, such as Wu Tianzhang, uh, Chen Jieren, Yao, Yao Ruizhong, and many other more have collectively marched on the international arena to demonstrate Taiwan's self-power, reflection upon our history with a capital H, uh, and historiography with brand new, you know, innovative and revolutionary, uh, revolution-minded aesthetic politics. So Wu Tianzhang takes on vintage photographic images to critically examine the dominant ideological effects to ponder the question of Taiwanese subjectivity as quasi-fakeness. That would be a crucial term when we talk about cultural identity in Taiwan. What is that kind of quasi thickness in his mind? In Venice, um, Banner's Art Festival, and Chen Jieren's critical words on the torture treatment from Qing Dynasty feudal system shows an unusual rhythm and super slowly and almost motionless speed when seen or seen through the public participating parliament uh, is public art practice. Yara Jones marching into journalism of Chiang Kai-shek's statue park in Taoyuan, right near the airport, maybe cries a satiric salute to his authoritarian contribution, quote unquote, to the country. His photograph surveys many ruined dump sites, that is, westlands, unused spaces, further constructs specific special sentiments and historical alienness. Media literacy has transformed into an essential part of the fundamental ingredients in educational system, thanks to the booming of the many, many media literacy organizations, such as Media Observation Foundation and other institutions. A meta-media, that, that's, that is the term I try to argue here, 
uh, meta media or post media movements, namely media's advocacy for media criticism. It's weird. We are watching media criticize itself. Um, and media investigation and media literacy, if not out of cutthroat competitions or political smearing, was formed to promote civil engagement and read the media message and strengthen audiences' judgments. Media literacy works to represent the inevitable confrontation of new media mythology as emancipatory uh, institutions from previous ideological domination to new media as an affirmative blueprint for better cross-cultural and international communication with the global society, especially for Taiwan. Media items in the new media art waves were appropriated and sampled from a critical and creative nexus to portray a not so brand new new world enriched with critical creativity and creative criticism. And new media in a formula of te techno uh, technology determination brings the public the great opportunity of participating in emancipation and even more wide range of modern media comprehension. New media in a turbulent process in Taiwan's rough path to full-scale democratization symbolizes anxiety from the government body and hope for global, regional, local convergence culture after media deregulatory salute. The ending, in the backdrop of prevalent fake news, AI, artificial intelligence, and big data analysis, we are all bombarded with this term. Uh, even today, I mean, uh, in Taiwan, okay, everybody talked about big data, a lot of forums, a lot of, um, you know, we were forced to offer courses related to AI and image making, that kind of thing. Um, uh, this kind of rhetoric on various media platforms, technological determination assumption, seems went over the audience consumer psychological effects. So I want to also give the, uh, the differentiation between the idea of the audience and the idea of the consumer. Public sphere is overwhelmingly penetrated through political, economic, and social pixels. Media moral panic effects outshone during the pandemic times in the past three years. In, um, okay, constructed an inward reverted character into a polarized map of media subject position. Uh, otherwise, the rhetoric of new media extended to media digitalization, audiovisual application, together with unmappable terrain of the reader, viewer, listener, user complex subject position. Um, it's never the, uh, a simple idea of, of audience. We can see these magnificent of technological determination shown in big data analysis and application on marketing through social media or even for other traditional media. Journalist practice has revolutionized into robot produced news writing for a speedy supply of news contents. It has been so in Taiwan for many, many years. I mean, since the online news. Uh, so, robot has been producing news for us every day in various forms. In Taiwan, AI service facilitates this smart medicine in the past three years. So, we were pretty good, I mean, at least for the first year. And timely allocation of media resources, universal street surveillance on people's obedience on precautions for COVID infection or in-house quarantine. Taiwan, famous for its semiconductor manufacturing and other high-tech achievements, also needs to compare, compete against the methodological rhetoric of the new media and strive with new media arts pedagogical refinements in fostering a more organic understanding in decoding media message, interpreting media text, and digest media ideological effects both before the audience, user, and behind the screen, window, mobile. New media artists have collectively demonstrated to us we shouldn't be afraid of new media and forge a tentative potential for mobilized new media towards a glo localizing culture term and for Taiwan, for Poland, and for the rest of the world. Thank you, Jin Jinguye.